Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Welcome to update video 9.5. Doesn't this thing look great? I love wearing this. So, like I said in the last update video, there was just so much I wanted to cover and so much that's changed that I knew I was gonna need to break this up into two different videos. Why don't I just call this update video 10? Because I don't want to, and it was filmed relatively within a close succession to each other. So, it's 9.5, deal with it, and I'm gonna teach you things, so don't complain. Today, I'm gonna to be going over the electronics, or all the new electronics that are gonna be in the suit, the rewiring, all the little circuits and systems. I'm actually gonna show you guys all the proper diagrams and layouts and all the equipment I've been using for this. A lot of people have been asking me to start posting links and have uh, Amazon affiliate links and carts and all this stuff added to my channel. I can't really do that because since I order stuff from US Amazon and UK Amazon and US eBay, UK eBay, I even get stuff from mainland Europe and I've even gotten some stuff from Japan. I order so many different little cheap electronics that it's hard for me to maintain these lists carts and affiliate links that you guys might be interested in. The best I could do is give you very good explanations of the electronics that I'm using, what they're called, and this way you guys can kind of Google them by yourself. And obviously I'll include pictures so you guys can, you know, see what you're looking for between the read switches, the COB LEDs. I want to be able to, uh, to let you guys find this stuff, but really this is the best way for me to do that. Um, a lot of the stuff needs to be found by yourself because you might not have access to it like I do. And if you need to build a suit in your own country or wherever you live, you need access to the materials that you're gonna be using. You can't waste money and spend time trying to find the stuff that I use. You might never be able to get it. So I got everything kind of laid out. It's a nice little uh, show and tell today. So let's get started. I have a whole multitude of stuff laid out that I'm gonna kind of be going over and explaining with you. If you guys don't really care for electronics or you have your own electronics and you don't wanna learn any of this, then maybe this isn't the video for you, but I'm gonna be breaking this down as, as simply as possible to actually get a lot of you guys who have never dealt with electronics a little more comfortable in making very simple circuitry. I just wanna go over that. This isn't a tutorial again, it, you know, it's just an update video. I'll be showing you all these little different things that are gonna be in the suit. And I know it looks like a lot, it's really not. It's just a lot of combined systems. So as I kinda of said in the last video, I ripped out all the electronics. So I left all the COB LEDs, all the body LEDs are still in here because I used rafts to kind of secure them in, but I still have little connectors waiting to receive electricity. And the same system that I have in here on the other side of the arc reactor, that's all still in there. You can see everything laid out here. You have the two LEDs that are up here, the whole arc reactor LED system, it's a wire that runs there. And then I have a very beefy uh, connector that actually connects the abs to the chest. So when I want to separate them, they come apart. And then I have the four LEDs and the abs just powered that way. And then coming out of the entire system is one long plug. And this is what actually plugs into my 12 volt power supply. And if I was to put power to this right now, all of the body LEDs would light up. So these are all the same COB LEDs that I've been using all over the place. They're little, you know, simple little squares that look exactly like this. And when they're off, they're yellow, but honestly, who really cares? They kind of blend in with the gold when they're off. They're very thin and flat and they're very easy to work with. Behind the arc reactor, I actually have four of them lined up to give the whole, the whole thing uh, a nice glow and effect and it looks pretty great. So let's actually start just a little bit basic. And I wanna talk about the LED eyes first and this is the circuit system I have for the LED eyes. These are actually all the components that go into this little circuit system right here. And we have the little battery pack that comes with the LED eyes. We have a little trigger pressure switch that goes into the helmet or wherever you wanna put this. We have a very tiny little reed switch. And what I wanted to do here is if I have this battery pack on right here, when the mask closes, the LED eyes come on. It's red and it's hard to see. I didn't have a white one available. So when the mask closes, the eyes are on. The mask opens, the eyes are off. On, off, on, off. However, when the mask is down, I wanted to have the ability to turn the LED eyes off anyway. I don't wanna be stuck having to open the mask just to walk around because obviously that'll break the illusion that you know it's me in the suit and not Iron Man. So I wanted to be able to add a relay system. However, I needed this relay system to remember where it was. And if you guys understand anything about normal automotive relays, they only stay in one position as long as there's power, to pl power applied. They don't have memory. Well, this is actually something cool called a flip-flop relay. And what it does is it actually does have that memory that I was talking about. So through this diagram and through this uh, system, what I was able to do is add a read switch to a trigger on this flip-flop relay. So now what happens when I pass a magnet over this reed switch, the LED eyes turn off and they'll turn on again, on, off, on, off, on. As long, so this reed switch is what's activating the LED eyes now. 
Basically, what's going to happen is mask opens, eyes are off, mask closes, eyes are on. But I still want to leave the mask down and have the eyes turn off. All I have to do is activate this read switch and the eyes will turn on and off depending on what I want. And this neodymium magnet is very strong. It works through plastic. And this is actually going to be one of the finger controls on my hand where my middle finger and thumb are going to be for the infinity gauntlet. My pointer finger is actually going to turn the LED eyes on and off exactly like this. I have other controls in the other hand. I'm going to have a magnet hidden in my thumb and this reed switch will be sitting on my pointer finger. So when my thumb gets close to my pointer finger, it'll turn the reed switch, it'll activate the reed switch and close the circuit, allowing the flip flop switch to trigger over. And I can go back and forth as many times as I want with my thumb turning the reed switch on and off. And yes, this neodymium magnet can work through multiple layers of plastic. It is very, very powerful. The reason I'm not, I have to use the flip-flop relay and I can't just add the reed switch in line with the LEDI is because it puts too much draw on the system. Reed switches don't like a lot of power going through them, but what they're more than comfortable handling are simple voltage triggers, like a flip-flop relay that needs a very low voltage to handle itself. Now, why do I have a separate battery pack for my LEDIs? Well, this USB battery pack right here is 5 volts. These LEDIs are 3 volts. Now I can add a resistor if I wanted to, and I'm probably going to do that, and we'll talk about that in the future, but that's not something I'm doing right now. This is actually a pretty simple circuit, and if you can kind of look at it and examine it a little bit better, and I can show you over here on the diagram, here's the 3 volt battery pack, and it goes to the trigger, so this is the mask opening and closing. The red is obviously positive, and the black is negative wire, and then it goes to the LEDIs, and it goes through the flip-flop switch. Now you have two options here with the flip-flop switch. You have normally closed or open and normally closed. The middle one is just a common. Now, depending on when the, the flip-flop switch turns off, it'll automatically go back to that normally closed circuit. So I have it set so if my USB battery pack ever dies and the, the flip-flop switch can't work anymore, what it's gonna do, it's gonna automatically turn the eyes off so at least I can walk around and still make my way out of a convention. It won't keep the eyes on permanently. If I was to move this black wire, over to this other side with the screw that's raised, it would they would it would automatically turn them back on. So the battery packs off, the flip-flop switch isn't working, so now the LEDIs won't turn on. But now if I power them on, it works again. So this is whole all one circuit kind of up top, and then down here is simply the trigger for the flip-flop switch. And you can see I have the reed switch here, which it only wants a negative contact. So I'm gonna take a real good image of this for you guys so you guys can screenshot it and try to mimic it the best you can. And hopefully some of you are able to actually understand this. I tried to make it as simple as possible. There actually are no jumps or loops in this entire diagram. It's very straightforward and very simple to manage. Just make sure when you're doing the LED mask that you have the trigger hooked up properly. You can actually wire this all up first and then you can add the flip-flop switch in by breaking this little circuit. And that's, again, all the flip-flop switch is doing, it's breaking this actual circuit right there. So the system for the servos is a little bit more complicated and has a little bit more of a complicated uh, wiring diagram. I could spend a whole video, I could spend an hour trying to explain this all to you guys. Basically, I ditched the automotive relays for an actual microcontroller Arduino-based relay system. Now, you don't need an Arduino to use this, you just need to wire it up properly. And all this is, is two little 5-volt relays, instead of the old 12-volt relays I was using, built onto a board with all these triggers and systems built right in. This is so small and compact, it is absolutely amazing. Now, you can get these that have uh, one relay, two relays, four relays, 16 relays. As long as you understand how a relay works, you can make this do pretty much anything. So I was able to ditch my 12 volt relays and I know this looks a little bit confusing and it, it makes more sense in the wiring diagram. Basically, I have a reed switch here and a reed switch here. And then I have a trigger here and a trigger there. Let me show you what this is gonna do for the helmet. So since we're using my hot wired servo and this is a plastic SG90 servo, it's a soft gear. I don't recommend these, get the MG90s. These are metal gear servos, they're stronger and they won't strip out as easily. You, you'll hear this motor, it's already broken, but I left it for this so you guys can actually hear it. And what's gonna happen is in my fingers, I'm gonna have two controls, an open and a close. And there's gonna be a magnet on my, my thumb to actually control this. So I have a reed switch here, my pointer finger, and then I have another reed switch over here on my uh, middle finger and this is the system that it's going to actually incorporate or when i pass the magnet over one reed switch it closes it activates this one relay to start applying power to only one of the lines but this the but what's actually happening is it's the motor is going to want to keep going we need to tell the relay to stop working and that's where this trigger right here comes in so imagine if the mask was closed and i want to open it open when it hits this trigger 
it stops. And this is what's gonna tell the servo to stop moving. We don't wanna burn the servo out, we don't wanna risk breaking our mask. However, so now the mask is open, I wanna close the mask, I go over to this side, and it still works, even though this trigger is being held. And then when the mask is fully closed, this other trigger over here gets touched. And you can go back, open, closed. Open, closed. This way it saves the servo from ever taking any damage. Now this is a, seems like a little bit of a complicated solution for an analog option that I'm doing, but again, there's no programming here. This will work perfectly for your helmets and there's no coding, no Arduinos, and it's still actually pretty compact. And you can put, you can fit all of this in the helmet, even your battery pack, if you really put it in the right spot. So here's another picture of the wiring diagram for here. Now, if you guys have never seen a wiring diagram, let me kind of explain it for a second because this was a little bit more complicated. This is my five volt battery pack and all of this runs off of five volts. Okay. This is my five volt battery pack. Obviously the red is positive, the black is negative. You see these loops right here? That means they shouldn't touch. That means that red wire is passing over the black wire, not through it. These are obviously junctions. This is all positive, positive, positive. This is all positive. It goes to the helmet trigger, goes through the reed switch, and then it works fine. But if you see these loops, that means those wires don't touch each other. Up here, it gets a little bit tricky, I, I know, but you have the negatives passing over all of this, and then you have the positives all being in its own thing. Hopefully you guys can understand this. Like I said, I can spend absolutely hours teaching you guys all of this and explaining these systems. But if you guys can understand this enough to mimic it, hopefully as you build it, you'll start to understand what's actually going on. Obviously, this doesn't translate well into what the actual application will be. These limiter switches are, and the limiter switch wires and the servo are going to need to be ran up to the helmet. So right there, that's actually six wires that are going up to your helmet. The reed switches are gonna to need to be ran into your gloves or wherever you have them. Now you don't need to actually have them in your gloves. Uh, I've seen people put hide the reed switches in their waist, somewhere on their body, somewhere on their chest. And this way, when they pass a magnet in their hand over it, say it was in your it, hidden in your thigh for whatever reason, you'd pass your hand over it and then that mask would open. But you can put them really wherever you want. They don't need to be in the gloves. You can put these in the helmet. So when you go and touch your jaw, the mask opens. So this is how you can really do anything you want with these reed switches and put them wherever you want. And then this is just the relay board right here laid out just a little bit easier to follow. So you have your grounds, which is your negative, these four pins right here. You have your ground, your input one, which is your trigger one, your input two, which is your trigger two. So those control the separate relays, and then your positive. And then coming out of it is your whole relay system, your 87A, your 30, your 87. And it's split into two sides. So it's pretty easy to kind of follow. And I don't know if you guys can see those white lines. This is for relay side one. And you can see the middle white line is kind of tilted over to the left, that means that's the circuit it's normally touching. So this first and second contact here are actually touching each other right now until you put power to them and the relay switches over and the second or third contact will be touching. So relays are fun. I hope you guys can kind of understand them. And everything you see here is also incorporated into this system. We have the servo, the relay board, the little trigger, and another reed switch, and then just a five volt USB battery pack. Now another question I got was, how are you actually using a USB cable for your battery packs? Now I can't speak for every single USB cable out there because some of them use data and some of them actually have multiple wires. But if you have a USB cable that its only purpose is to charge things, typically there's only gonna be two wires in there. And all I did was cut this open and strip the wires. That's the same thing I did with this and it gives you a really nifty way to plug in the USB battery packs and power your voltage systems. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with voltages and resistances and amperage. A good rule of thumb is keep whatever power system it came with. These LEDIs came with a three volt battery pack. So keep it three volts. If you need to start going up in voltage and amperage, then you're gonna to need to start doing math. You're gonna to need to start figuring out resistors, but I'm powering everything with what it wants. These relay boards want five volts, I'm giving them five volts. My infinity gauntlet wants 12 volts, I'm giving them 12 volts. So it's a, it's a very basis way to kind of keep everything safe and stable and not have to worry about uh, adding resistors and getting too complicated. So I hope those two systems kind of made sense to you guys. I, I enjoy this stuff. I love making wiring diagrams and plotting things out like this beforehand can really save you a lot of trouble because then what I'm gonna do is actually look at these and overlap them and combine them because obviously both systems are powered off of the five volt USB packs 
and you can then start combining wires and making things integrate and work off of each other and it'll save you a lot of space. So this is the diagram for my actual uh, body lights. It's, so what's going on here is this is the entire power system for the repulsors that are in my palms, the infinity stones, which are right here, and then the body COB lights, which I showed you over there already. And this is actually an even simpler system than the other two. And what I decided on is initially when I had the infinity stones, they were just gonna only light up when I went for the snap pose, right? Well, after getting the flip-flop switch, I decided I'm gonna add another, the same flip-flop switch. Unfortunately, I only have one right now, the other one's on order. I'm gonna add another flip-flop switch to the infinity stones. Now, this raises a little bit of a complication. This flip-flop switch needs to be triggered by five volts. And let me actually get you guys that good picture so you guys can take a screenshot and try to mimic this. And then I'll break the, the diagram down a little bit for you. Okay, hopefully that was long enough. So there's actually two different voltages going on here. And let me, let me start from the basis. We have a 12 volt USB battery pack, which is this beefy boy right there. And this is giving positive and negative. Straight up, very simply, it gives the positive and negative to the body COB, the, the COB LEDs. These 12 volt Cobb LEDs are what is getting powered by this 12 volt. They're gonna be on when this battery pack is on. Very simple, like that's it. That's the whole diagram right there for the body LEDs. Now what it's also gonna do, it's also gonna to wanna to go this way. It's gonna jump that wire and then it's gonna to go to a trigger. And if you guys saw in the other videos, when I tilted my hand back, the repulsors would turn on. And that's because I had one of these, one of these little relay triggers right here, hidden in my wrist. So when it would contact, it would activate the trigger and complete the circuit. And that's again, all that's happening here. Then the negative goes all the way back and pay attention, it jumps the flip-flop negative. This is its own circuit. So it kind of it pretend like that's not there. So all this is doing is closing it. Imagine if the body LEDs, it's operating on the same principle, the body LEDs and the repulsors and the palms, same thing, there's just a trigger in the way. So that all comes back this way. The infinity stones are also powered by the same 12 volt, but they're gonna get the 12 volts from this red get powered, but now what I'm doing is using the flip-flop relay, I'm interrupting this negative. So instead of the negative coming back to the battery pack by itself, it goes into the flip-flop relay and comes back out. And the flip-flop relay is gonna let me touch my fingers, turn the stones on, turn the stones off, turn the stones on, turn the stones off. It'll give me a little bit more option and effect to actually you know, doing poses and stuff. This way I don't need to perfectly hold my fingers in that snap pose. I can turn them on, make a fist, do whatever I want turn them off. So the flip-flop relay, same system as before. What I did is I coded the, po the positive and negative differently. I don't know why I did it this way, but the blue is positive, okay? And the pink is negative. And there's a read switch, and that's what's gonna be hit, uh, in my middle finger, turning the, the relay switch, the flip-flop switch on and off. Now, I'm gonna have these two flip-flop switches, this one and this one, basically sitting next to each other. All the electronics are gonna be housed in the back of my suit. And since I got rid of the 12 volt relays, I'm gonna have so much more room for activities in here, which is gonna be great. But this is, this is also gonna be combined with this and combined with this. And I'll, I will show you guys a final iteration. I am gonna do a drawing of this, but now I can visualize where everything needs to go. And then that five volt USB battery pack is only powering the flip-flop relay. And then the flip-flop re relay up here is letting the Infinity Stones 12 volt come through it. Because if you pay attention to the top of this flip-flop relay, it actually tells you right there, Sorry, it might be hard to see. Five volt DC is what it wants for the trigger. It can take 250 alternating current um, volts or it can take up to 300 uh, DC voltage. So this flip-flop relay can let a lot of power through it with no problem. So handling just a couple little 12 volt lights will be no issue at all. And this is a very simple positive and negative system going to the infinity stones. And then I just have a really long wire for dramatic effect. This way I wanna, you know, obviously I did the opening and I wanted to light that up. But hopefully this one made sense too. If you don't wanna use a 12 volt battery, USB battery pack, they also make 12 volt straight up normal battery packs that just have batteries in them. Obviously these aren't rechargeable. You're gonna burn through batteries pretty quickly um, unless you get rechargeable batteries, but that's on you. And these can plug in and do whatever you want with them. Over here, we have a Shiba sleeping underneath my uh, my desk. Oh, take say hi to her real quick. Yeah. It's windy out and she's afraid of the wind. It spooks her. Yeah. Little, little donut. So, these are some other electronic goodies. 
there's all this stuff going on here. So I have a couple different connectors and plugs. This is one, one of the stronger body plugs I have. And I like these because they really stay together and they look like audio jacks, but just positive and negative. I have these very tiny little JST connectors and you can just search two pin connectors on eBay and Amazon and find whichever ones you want. These are like 22, 20 gauge wires. They don't like staying in each other. Um, if you put tension on them, they will come apart pretty easily, but they're very, very handy for running the COB LED lights. These are a little bit beefier connectors, which I really love. Uh, these things are absolutely great. These are three pin connectors that actually lock together. And these are five pin connectors. And you get a whole bag of them for like five bucks. And these are actually what I'm using around the suit, around the wrists or uh, into the helmet. So you can, they're, they're, these are absolutely great. Um, if you guys wanna try to look up that part number or find out wherever the hell you can get it. I also got my hands on a, uh, it's an Arduino sensor kit. Now, again, there's no Arduino in my suit, but a lot of these can be utilized without an Arduino. Right here alone, this is a relay exactly like this flip-flop relay, and it's literally the same thing, except it, this one doesn't remember where it was, this one does. So you can use things like this out of these kits, and there's a lot of nifty stuff in here to play with. Obviously, I can't use things like this without um, Arduinos, but it also gives you a lot of resistors and a lot of other cool little boards and connectors to play with. It has Hall effect sensors, and like I can spend all day talking to you about this. That you can use moisture sensors, you can use you can use reed switches, you can use laser emitters, diodes, ball switches, photoresistors. A lot of this stuff will work with no programming. You just need to play around with it. And then I have a little kit full of uh, all my re all my servos, and you can see all my new metal servos. You can see all my old test plastic servos and even like a wing servo, which this thing's actually expensive and really strong. So again, I know this was a lot guys, and I hope a lot of that made sense. This wasn't a tutorial, like I said, I really am going to explain this all to you guys and try to show you what specifically I'm gonna do. There will be a helmet motorization tutorial eventually, once this is done and squared away and only about this. There will be a little bit more in depth on the flip flop system and the LED eyes. I am gonna do a tutorial on the Infinity Gauntlet. I am gonna show you guys a lot more wiring and simple systems. But the basically what, where you wanna start is get, some, get a very simple circuit going. These LED eyes come with the battery pack and the LEDs. Get those, add a little trigger to them, cut the wires apart, add a trigger and see what it does. All right, cool, I'm breaking the circuit. Then get a little relay. It doesn't need to be a flip flop. Get a simple relay system and add it. See how you can make it turn on and off and what you can do to incorporate it. Add a read switch to it. So there's so much you can do just by experimenting and learning. And when you're dealing with little low voltage LEDs like this, you don't necessarily need to worry about burning too much stuff out. You're not gonna get shocked. You're not gonna really hurt yourself, but just always be cognizant of it and do it in a safe environment. There's tons of guides and tutorials out there. I am trying to add to that pool to help things a little bit easier for you guys, but hopefully this, you know, you guys can kind of figure out a lot of it by yourself. All right, guys, I think that does it for this. Um, like I said, I, I know that was a lot and I'm sorry. Um, like these update videos, I just want to give you guys a general idea of what I've been doing, how I've been doing it, and there will be tutorials following suit. If you guys haven't already, I implore you, join the Discord. Um, we're over, well over 300 members now. We have a lot of cool uh, things going on there, a lot of nerds talking, a lot of people learning, a lot of people teaching. We're gonna start different workshops with different people teaching different things. So please give that a look. There's a link down below. It's free to join and I promise you will learn something. The people there are awesome. And if everybody's already in it, thank you so much. You make this so much easier because you guys, my moderators and my patrons, you guys make this so much easier for me to do and make content and host giveaways and do all this stuff. As of now, there is no July giveaway. I need a little bit of a break from that to focus on some other projects. So I apologize for that, but I promise August will be even better because obviously things are going pretty good. I'm really hoping by the next update video, I'm actually wearing and almost damn near done with the suit. So I'm very excited. I've made amazing progress in these past couple days. Um, so again, thank you everybody for being patient. This is uh, the main reason a lot of you follow me and I know things have gotten a little skewed and off track, but I've just embraced this whole hobby and it's been so much fun. So thank you for understanding. I do have a really cool little side project that I've been very excited about for quite a while. Check it out, Mark One Iron Man helmet. <laughs> I got the file from uh, DO3D. They have the actual whole suit, but I've always wanted just the helmet, and I am working on a little bit of a build video for this. Not a build review, an actual build video showing you guys how I printed it, how I'm gonna sand it, how I'm gonna paint it. And I was actually able to get my hands on a little bit of a uh, welder's hat kind of thing. So uh, I'm trying to make this as authentic as possible to obviously go with my Mark 85. 
it was always a little goal, a little you know, side display dream of mine to have his first helmet and his last helmet, and obviously I have his last suit. I am not making the Mark One full Mark One suit. I don't need that pile of trash in my room. I don't have the room for it. Maybe if I expand one day, I'll have room for it. But for now, the helmet. And this file is simple and beautiful, and it came out perfect. Even the welds look good. So stay tuned for that. Big old shout out again to 1195 Designs for making my new channel logo and helping me design the new intro and all that stuff. So please, if you guys are interested in any type of graphic designs or want to revamp your channel or pages or just looking for general t-shirts, go look at them. There's a link for them down below. And Craig, thank you again for everything. And I absolutely love the new logos. If you guys are interested in my Patreon, go check that out. If you aren't, ignore what I just said. Uh, thank you for everything. And if you want to talk to me more, join the Discord, hit me up on Instagram. And I think that just about does it. So again, thank you for everything. And have a good day.